Back in the early 20th century, between World War I and World War II, battleships evolved like nearly all weapon systems. Their guns, armour, and especially speed were improved. But an overlooked design change was the shape of the ship's hull. In World War I, battleships had an elliptical shaped hull, but in World War II, they had switched to a bottle shaped hull. This design change came at a cost of the ship's turning radius, but its main advantage was that it allowed the turrets to be wider at the areas of the hull where the turrets sat, therefore allowing three triple gun turrets rather than four dual gun turrets. Increasing firepower by a single gun, and decreasing weight making an entire turret and gun house assembly redundant entirely. Welcome to random military history. Moving on to the mid 20th century, turret ring diameter not only had an impact on the use of battleships, but also the use of tanks for exactly the same reason. No, not to add two or more guns per turret, but to allow the tank to ergonomically accommodate a larger gun. In fact, this design consideration is one of the most determinate when a surplus tank is to be kept in service or retired. A great example of this was the use after World War II of the M4 Sherman and Panther. Despite the Panther being the larger tank at 45 tons to the Sherman's 30, its turret wing was actually smaller at 1600mm in diameter to the Sherman's 17 1950. Panther served on until 1949 in French service and its gun was never upgraded before the tank was retired. But the Sherman on the other hand served in Israeli service up until the 1980s as the larger turret ring could accommodate the 105mm gun used on the French AMX-30 in the form of the M51 Super Sherman, seeing action in the Six Days War and even knocking out a few T-54s. Let's see it in action. In my last video, I talked about the largest conventional explosive ever detonated being the mines on the first day of the Battle of the Somme, but that was not the largest unintentional man-made explosion. In World War II, there was a much larger conventional explosion. In April of 1945, the Imperial Japanese Navy ship Yamato was engaged in Operation Tango, where in the upcoming invasion of Okinawa, she was planned to beach herself, becoming a super fortress on the island. But before she could get there, she was ambushed by 386 aircraft that struck her with a total of 8 torpedoes and 15 bombs, disabling and capsizing the ship. But as the ship capsized, her front magazine exploded. It is unknown exactly how many tons of TNT did actually explode, but it was raining in the hundreds of tons, producing a mushroom cloud six kilometers high. Only 282 of the 3,332 men on board the ship at the time survived the sinking. As the explosion was so massive, it literally ripped the 72,000 ton battleship in half. World War I staged the bleakest type of warfare in human history, tankless trench warfare which created a combat environment where rangers were fought at much shorter distances within the trenches. But existing small arms were terribly ill-suited to fight in these spaces, so the first mass-produced submachine gun was developed, the German MP18. It was expensive, controllable, nimble, and high capacity. By modern standards, to develop and use such a weapon would be obvious. But despite this, it was the only widely used weapon of its kind in the war at all. It was only fielded in the last year of World War I in 1918, after four years of the glaring problem persisting, with the only comparably effective weapon in close quarters combat at the time being the 1897 Winchester shotgun fielded by the United States, demonstrating just how much technology at the time had outpaced the thinking and the tactics of the nations that partook in the war. Let's see it in action. <laughs> I didn't even consider that. Yeah. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed. 
Uh, I hope to be releasing videos like this once every week to two weeks, uh, which is a massive improvement over releasing them once every seven months, like I was doing before. Uh, I had a few things busy. Uh, anyway, thank you, uh, and goodbye.